It's a matter of great honor for me to be addressing this August gathering, and I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mahendra Bhandari and the Vat Vatikuri Foundation for this opportunity. My mandate is to speak on how many cores in a prostate biopsy, and I'm going to try my best to stick to time as well as my mandate here. Now, we've come a long way since, you know, digitally directed biopsy was the standard of care, and now we have sextant biopsies and then extended uh, scheme biopsies and now saturation biopsies with more than 20 cores. And the journey began in 1937 with Astraldi describing the first transrectal prostate biopsy. Transrectal ultrasound was discovered and was invented in 1968, but it took another 20 years for Hodge to describe its use in systematic sextant biopsies. And the reason for that was that uh, we came to know that early prostate cancer may not be palpable and may not be visible as a nodule on transrectal ultrasound. Now, the sextant biopsy, which we all know in, consists of three biopsies from each lobe in a parasagittal plane, uh, was the standard of care in the early 1990s. And at least the tissue from the base and the mid parasagittal plane also included some part of the transitional zone of the prostate. The extended biopsy actually uh, was the 10 to 14 core templates which ruled the roost in the late 1990s and is still considered the standard of care for patients who are undergoing their initial biopsy. And that came about because it was realized that most prostate cancers in fact arise in the lateral peripheral zone of the prostate, an area which is easily missed in the sextant template, thereby resulting in an underdetection of 15 to 35 percent of prostate cancers. So the strategy, which included changing the location and increasing the number of cores, brought about the advent of the extended biopsy. And one of the studies, which, which was a landmark in finding the optimal combination for a systematic sextant and a laterally directed biopsy, was the, this study from Baylor College of Medicine, uh, which evaluated various different protocols. And ultimately, they figured out the best protocol, which was a 10 to 12 core biopsy protocol including laterally directed biopsies to the apex, mid, and base of the prostate. They found that uh, out of 396 patients, 40.4% were detected to have cancer. But the sextant cores were positive only in 75% of these. So we would have missed about 25% of cancers in case we would perform only uh, sextant biopsies. So the question arose that does increasing the number of biopsies actually increase the complication rate uh, in the prostate biopsy? And in a large study of almost 6,000 patients, it was found that there was no major increase in any of the no major complications, including sepsis, infectious complications, and the need for hospitalization. The only thing that increased was a slight incidence of hematospermia, which was not clinically significant. So as a result of this, the extended template biopsy became uh, the preferred option for doing the initial prostate biopsy in, in patients who have a high PSA. There about, thereafter came the saturation biopsy. And saturation biopsy came to be defined as 20 or more cores uh, in a prostate biopsy. And it was found that when it was used in the template uh, in a repeat biopsy setting, it was found that uh, the detection rate improved significantly. In fact, in one study, it was found that there was almost a 9 to 10 percent improvement in detection rate when it was used as a second biopsy. So thereby, saturation biopsy has been used for patients who have a previous negative biopsy and still have a rising PSA. It's also been used in a repeat biopsy setting in patients who have uh, atypical small acinar proliferation in the first biopsy or possibly multifocal high-grade pin. And currently, with the increasing use of active surveillance and focal therapy protocols, uh, there is an increase in interest in the use for saturation biopsy. Now, if you look at saturation template in a repeat biopsy, one of these studies from the Cleveland Clinic found that there was a 29% detection rate in patients who had a previous negative biopsy. If you considered patients who had a previous sextant biopsy, the detection rate was actually as high as 41% as compared to 24% in patients who had had a previous extended, sec extended scheme biopsy. So this is one more point in favor of using the extended scheme biopsy as the first biopsy. It was also found that 
in this study that there were no exclusively positive cores in the medial, mid, and base regions. And therefore, after this study, the Cleveland Clinic changed this protocol from the one on your left where there were 22 cores taken with two cores each from the parasagittal base and parasagittal mid, which also included part of the transitional zone, to only one uh, biopsy from the parasagittal base and mid on both sides. So this was the 20 core protocol that is now advocated by the Cleveland Clinic in their latest uh, papers. It was also found that there was no difference in complications in extended and saturation biopsy. So if there's no difference in complication rates, why not just do saturation biopsy for all the patients, even in the first biopsy setting? There have been numerous studies, and including this one, which, which is on the screen, which has shown that there is no improvement in detection rate when you use saturation biopsy in the initial biopsy setting. So saturation biopsy improves detection rate in a repeat biopsy, but it does not improve detection rate in the first biopsy. The logic for that is that most of the cancers are picked up on an extended template in the initial biopsy, and repeat biopsy is a greater challenge for cancer detection than is the initial biopsy. So as a result of that, saturation template has been reserved for a, in a repeat biopsy setting and not in the initial biopsy setting. We all know that it's logical to assume that if we have a larger prostate, we, we'll have more difficulty in finding prostate cancer in it. And there have been studies which show that if you take prostates less than 30 centimeter cube in size, the detection rate with a biopsy is about 43% as compared to only 24% in large prostates. There have been a number of nomograms, including the Vienna nomogram, which is based on prostate volume and age of the patient. And these nomograms have been vo validated for PSA ranges for, from 2 to 10 nanogram per ml. These nomograms tell us when to do the biopsy based on these parameters and also how many cores to take in from which areas. However, till now, they have not been used widespread clinically because of their complexity and the relative tediousness of calculating the locations and biopsies required, the number of cores taken from on the basis of the nomogram. We have an increased uh, number of patients worldwide who are now opting for active surveillance. And as a result of that, saturation biopsy has been studied in this group of patients. Data is still preliminary, but we have found that patients who have, uh, who have undergone saturation biopsy are more likely to be correctly staged or, and graded in uh, active surveillance protocols. In fact, in a repeat biopsy, which was done in a saturation fashion about nine months after starting the active surveillance protocol, it was found that patients who had had a greater than 20 core initial biopsy had only an 11% rate of upstaging or upgradation as compared to 55% in patients with less than 20 cores on an initial biopsy. So there is an increasing role of saturation biopsy in patients who are on active surveillance protocol. These are just the last couple of slides. I just want to mention the, the value of apical cores. Now, apical area is an area which is very easily missed in our biopsies. And I think we need to pay a lot more attention to apical cores than any other part of the prostate. We know that the entire apex is comprised of the peripheral zone. As a result, it is more likely to harbor cancer than any other part of the prostate. In fact, about 17% of cancers are missed with standard template if we don't take adequate apical zone biopsies. The anterior apical part, which is most likely to harbor malignancy, is difficult to palpate on a DRE, so a nodule may be missed there. Apical biopsies are painful, so that's why most urologists, in fact, a lot of us would avoid taking a lot of apical biopsies. And as a result of that, we may miss some of these cancers. So an extended template should incorporate at least two apical cores on each side, and not many of us are doing that. And however, you know, even in patients, if patients are undergoing repeat biopsy, we may need to uh, increase the number of apical cores to optimize the yield of uh, prostate cancer here. What about transitional zone? Do we need to take routine biopsies from transitional zone? Most of the studies suggest that we do not, at least not at the initial biopsy setting. That is because in the initial biopsy, as it is when we take parasagittal cores in the mid and base region, we do get some transitional zone tissue and transitional zone is unlikely to uniquely harbor malignancy. 
So therefore, though it may have a role in the repeat biopsy scenario, it is generally not recommended to take separate transitional zone biopsies in the initial setting. The MRI-directed biopsy is something that is uh, currently a focus of interest, and I would like to go over a study from, from India which won the CKP Menon Award paper in, in the currently conducted uh, UCCON in Bangalore. This was a study from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and they used MRI-directed biopsy for patients undergoing uh, standard truss biopsy uh, and, and compared them to patients who had undergone standard truss biopsy plus additional two MRSI-directed biopsies to abnormal voxels, and they found that the cancer detection rate was nearly doubled. Clearly, much further work needs to be done on this, and we look forward to more work coming in from India. However, generally MRI-guided biopsies have been used more in the repeat biopsy settings rather than the initial biopsy setting and may have a role in the future. So I'd like to conclude by saying that when you're considering a patient for initial biopsy, 10 to 14 cores with special attention to the apex are probably ideal. In a repeat biopsy setting, more than 20 cores should be taken because it's been sh shown to improve detection rates. Patients put on active surveillance may ideally be treated, may ideally be managed with repeated saturation biopsies rather than extended biopsies. The apical cores are most likely to harbor unique malignancy and they should be taken special care of during biopsies. Also, routine exclusive transitional zone sampling in the initial setting may not improve prostate cancer detection and MRI seems to have a promising future, especially in the setting of a repeat biopsy. Thank you very much, sir.